always does that. And we're live. There we go. See that little button up there? Now we know we're live. Hi, everybody. Hey. Uh, it's Tuesday Tub Talk. And this week, my guest is Trey McCurley, who is now a very old friend. I've known you for a long time. Yeah. And, uh, and a wonderful actor. Um, I want to take a minute before we get going to just let all of you know that we are going to set a start date for the Crazy Bitches web series. And we're going to absolutely, definitely shoot two episodes. In order to do that, though, I need to reach 10,000 before this whole thing ends next Wednesday. So I'm going to need help. Uh, but we're going to shoot two episodes, and for every $5,000 more we can collect some way or other, we'll shoot another episode. I've been lucky enough to have some people help up and... Uh, what is the start date? Uh, hopefully, we're looking at November 25th. I'm waiting for one person to clear their schedule. That's the, uh, yeah, it's the earliest I could get everybody free. Because there is like a cast of 20. It's a big cast. It's a big, huge, giant cast, which Trey is a part of. Um, so, uh, so we'll talk a little bit more at the very end. I'll, I'll fill you guys in on details, but I just wanted you to know we are going forward. I'm really excited about this. Are you excited about today? Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see everybody again and get back up there and film. Yeah, yeah, and you're going to get to learn a little bit more about Trey's character. You know, he showed up a few times in Crazy Bitches. Oh, the bubbles. I forgot the bubbles, everybody. I'm sorry. Bubbles. Hey, here we go. Um, I'm sorry. They're not working very well. Hold on. Woo! Isn't that pretty? Uh, <laughs> So, um, so anyway, uh, Trey and I met. 2010. Almost exactly a year. Yeah. Because it would have been right before Thanksgiving mm -hmm. in 2010. Um, and I, I had, I was working on casting for Meth Head, and we had a start date, which was the week after Thanksgiving, and we had Trey. Hi, Nick. Hi Nick. I don't. Hi. Um, anyway, we had we had uh, we had been out to Lucas Haas for the role, and he wasn't saying yes. And I was like, he will say yes. And and the casting director and the agent and everybody was like, no, he's not going to say yes. And finally, my casting director said, you need to hold an audition and you need to need to back this up. So Trey came in. I came and in. And we worked together. Yeah, yeah, she put me through the ringer for a little while, and um, Blake, Blake Barris was in the audition. Was he there? Yeah, I knew him from UCLA already, and then he was there reading with me. Oh, I, mean, I don't remember that. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Blake oh, read with me, yeah, and then um, the room was full. I remember that, so all, you, all, you were all in there. Yeah, we all, sure. we all showed up, and it was, you know, oh, hi, Sherry. Um, it was, it was really nerve-wracking because we only had a couple of days to make a decision, but the, this was the worst part. So I, I thought Trey was wonderful. He did a great job. We worked together. He'd take direction really well. Thought you could for an actor to take direction well. And, um, but, uh, we, we held, we held for callbacks until the beginning of the following week. And we did these callbacks and then, um, I was like, okay, Trey's absolutely the guy. I'm gonna call, just to be sure, I'm gonna call Wilson Cruz. Wilson, yeah. Hi, Wilson, if you see this. Love you. you know, yeah, because they He's were in friends. The new, uh, Star Trek Star thing, Trek movie, yeah. yeah. TV show, I think it's a TV show. I thought it was a movie. Uh, really? Whatever it is, congrats. Whatever, yes. Yeah. Um, so I called Wilson, because he was playing, op he was the role opposite him, and I, I was like, call me back, I just wanna know what you think about this actor. While we were waiting for Wilson to call us back, Lucas Haas's agent called and said, Lucas wants to talk to you. To make a long story longer, he said yes. And I forgot to call Trey. Did you? Yes, I forgot to call you Please, to tell I, you. Everybody knows no call is, and that's an answer. That's, Aww, a, that's a typical, no. that's an actor, that's what, no, you know, no, you don't get that many calls to tell you no, so. It's mostly yes. You, I feel like you, Talk to me. I know you talked. I know, to but me it was like that. a week later. But you went. You were going right into production. Yeah. You were a calling ass at that point. I know, you but know I, I, mean? I always felt bad about that, and I always remembered him, and I was like, I have got to work with Trey again. She's and, hired me ever since. Yeah. And yeah, and we went. You know, we, we stayed in touch and had cocktails like we are today. 
<laughs> uh, cocktails today. Oh, by the way, because it's backwards. Yes. Nick, yeah, she's a, wi a wizard dress. A wizard. Wi wiz a wizard? A female wizard. Yeah, <laughs> whatever that is. Um, but uh, but anyway, so when Crazy Bitches came along, I was like, I'm going to write him a role. It wasn't a huge role, but I always knew I was going to want to try to keep going and thread people into the film, uh, the series, in a way that was maybe, yeah. we don't know if you're good or bad. Yeah. We don't know who you are really yet. Yeah. It's been a long, long Crazy Bitches journey. It's been fun. So, um... In Crazy Bitches, Trey had some interesting things to do. Yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't. You can talk about it. Tell it without spoiling it. At this point, if you haven't seen Crazy Bitches at this point, uh, and you know, one of the things I found out is that nobody cares. Like the yeah. the horror magazines would be like, send us a kill, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and then you find out later you're just supposed to do it. Yeah. You know, because they people are still gonna watch the movie. So mm -hmm. go ahead and tell them what happened. It was like a horrible. We had a horrible, horrible night the blood was coming out the back of the knife instead of where it was supposed to come out and I had on it was broken a full black face mask and could barely see through and it was just it was kind of it was a little rough moment I couldn't get the blood to squeeze out on her head and then I tried yeah. to I, I was holding the knife upside down at one point so. yeah yeah I have it and now we're not saying that he is the killer or was the killer but he was playing the killer for us yeah in these really difficult killer scenes yeah and it was... It was Mary Jane. And Did you I were killing you were killing Mary Jane. Oh, hey, Patricia. Is mom. it Pat, Pat or Patricia? Oh, it's, it's mom. Mom. Yeah, mom. Hi, yes. Mom. Um, uh, but what, 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 you know, what happened was that we had, yeah, we had high vents. We had a broken uh, prop knife. Blood knife. So that was dripping. We had then tried that gooey blood. <laughs> So my makeup artist was like, we'll put this gooey blood and it'll just leave a streak. That that didn't work. That was awful. Everything wasn't working. And then in one take, when I went back to look at it and tried to cut the whole thing together, the knife was upside down. And I was like, oh, man. And it, I think, I don't know, if you watch the movie, um, I may have used that take. I may be giving away secrets, but I may have used that take. Uh, so anyway, but we had fun. Yeah. yeah we had fun. That's the most fun. Hey, Ed. Yeah, it's Ed King. Ed. Hi, Ed. Congrats on uh, Caged being in all the festivals. It's another film I did with him. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Um, but yeah, Crazy Bitches and that San Francisco trip is the most fun film festival trip I've ever been on. That was fun. The most fun hand sound. Oh, like, my with God. With the whole cast of Crazy Bitches. Is Sam going to come? As yeah. Kathy has, has Kathy? Kathy hasn't done one of these. Kathy Duenno? Kathy hasn't what? Done one of these, a hot tub. Kathy's doing it next week. Oh, sweet. And then Sam, I got a book in. Sam's, Sam. uh, we just haven't scheduled it, but she'll be somewhere coming up. But, um, but yeah, that trip was great because we played Frameline. Yeah. And Frameline paid for hotel rooms at this little hotel. And the, uh, the pool was in the center, and all our rooms were on the ground floor facing out towards the pool. And they literally put up, there were like 10 or 12 of us there. There were like. I feel like there are 10 or 12 rooms. I mean, there were I mean, so I feel many. Like there were 20 people there. Yeah, I mean, so. everybody that could make it, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. We started with a party when everybody got there. It was supposed to be like a five o'clock party, and everybody got there at three thirty, and they're like, Where, "Where's the liquor?" So we started the party at three thirty. <laughs> that that was a messy night. <laughs> and then, I mean, it was all, it was just so much fun. It was fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that was a good time. And so you know, with Crazy Bitches, with the web series, Trey's going to be back, and uh, we're going to learn a little bit more about him. He's gonna walk around and turn girls down left and right. Yeah, and just turning people yeah, down. Yeah, he's gonna have to turn girls down. Yeah. And, you know, do a little yoga. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do some yoga and some stretching up there. Yeah. But you know, see. Oh, yeah, wait a second. Um, so, why don't, you, yeah, why don't you talk about what you've been doing? Oh, yeah. Well, um. Because you just finished a film. Or are yeah, you a yeah. film? You well, have... anyone, who, uh, anyone who has Netflix, you can get on, and it's uh, called People You May Know. Um, a film I did directed and written by J.C. Falcon, and um, it's a really great cast of actors. Um, Anybody we'd know? Uh, Sean Mayer is uh, the lead, one of the leads from Firefly, and Andrea Grano, Mark Cirillo, Nacho San Jose, 
uh, there's just a bunch of actors, and uh, there's Spanish actors in it, um, uh, a very famous Spanish actress, so I can't remember her name, Nora, I can't remember her name, but, um, <laughs> but it's on Netflix right now, and yeah, you can see some interesting stuff, I, uh, there's a pretty good sex scene that I'm in, if you want to watch the movie, and then, you know, you can, I don't know, it, it's a good, it's a great movie, though, it's a Spanish production company, so there's a lot of Spanish actors, and, and um, crew and everyone involved, so. How many films have you done that have had sex scenes? Because I feel like there's been, I, I feel like, like I'm the only one who hasn't given you a sex scene. That's, I think that's true. Is that true? I think so. I'm gonna have to fix that. Uh, yeah, I mean, other than, yeah, I did a little short where I played a Jewish prisoner one time, I think, and I didn't, there was no sex in that, but yeah, it's always, there's all, <laughs> always sex scenes. Sex scenes and nudity. Yeah, lots of nudity, yeah. Why? Why, why does, why is he doing a lot of nude sex scenes? Sex scenes or nudity? I don't know. I'm never, like I was telling Jane, I'm never that guy. I'm never like the, the main guy in the movie. I'm always just the guy who's trying to fuck his wife or whatever. <laughs> so I feel like I just always get the racier, the racier things to do. And plus it doesn't bother me and they, they kind of, they kind of, they, they vet you to see if that's a problem before you get cast in any role. How do they vet you? Well, I mean, I'm they, asking they, just they to, talk to you, and, and they, the easiest way to bet me is that I've been on stage in several productions nude, so right. it's not, I, I tell them that or something, and they know that it's not a problem. But that's but, a, little, it's a little different doing film, though, because people can freeze frame it, they can pull stills yeah, yeah, yeah. off of it. Yeah, yeah. They definitely, know. yeah, there's definitely, people want to see. <laughs> people want to see, Jane, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> I keep, we've, I've been watching the comeback. If anybody's watched it, she, her producer's name is Jane, so she's always saying, Jane, Jane. And he's not going to stop now, it's I can tell funny. already. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, you're doing sex scenes, it's good to know you're comfortable with it, but you, you know, you want a little challenge, too. I mean, what's been the most challenging role you've ever had? Well, I, I mean... That's that's not scary to me. The sex and yeah. stuff is not as scary. Challenging. I was in Belize once doing a movie for. Ooh, that's cool. Um, right, right uh, before Crazy Bitches, right after grad school. At some point, it was one of my first movies, and I spent um, several weeks down in the jungle. And you know. Oh yeah, that was the. Yeah, it was an alien movie. <laughs> But uh, I was in the jungle down there for weeks, long days. It was just, it was the most grueling set that I've ever been on. I'll, I'll put it that way. It's kind you know? of a cool experience. Were it you was, glad you did it? Oh, it was awesome. It was yeah. awesome. And, you know, I worked with the director again after that in the movie Killing Nazi Dragons. Like a World War II I movie. I love where that movie. Hitler had dragons. That's a great, <laughs> that's a great film. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you need to check it out. <laughs> I will. I will. I will. Hitler has dragons. Hey, you know what? I mean, they, he got it made, right? Yeah, yeah. So, not knocking any movie that gets get made. Yeah, right. Did you slay the dragon? Fuck yeah. Took him out. <laughs> I was a, a pilot, a bomber. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think he did? Part of the re resistance against the Nazis and their dragons. You know. Oh, there's somebody outside uh, dropping stuff off, and Winston's just barking at him, and it's all good. And I don't think he needs taking something. Right? No, he's just trying. Anyway, sorry about that. We are sitting in the middle of my yard. So um, now, one of the things I thought was interesting when uh, I auditioned you was that you told me you were from Oklahoma, right? And my husband's from Oklahoma, right? And the character in Meth Head was um, supposed to be Middle American, but Oklahoma was good. Um, and it was a meth addict, and meth is very big in Oklahoma, huge. Yeah, Oklahoma, I feel like all of the South has a big meth and the main problem, but for directors like that, again, when directors are looking for something, anything that you can tell them, I feel like, that puts you ahead. So I was desperate, I, that, that role was a big role that Jane was reading me for. It was a lead in a film early on, right after I'd gotten out here, and, um, I stopped her after the audition was over and I told her that I'd been in trouble in Oklahoma for methamphetamines and marijuana and, you know, whatever, and, and that she shouldn't underestimate how I could relate to the script. I just, that I, I was familiar with that, that world. And, and it um, does work. I mean, it, it was it. It can help. Look, I would have, I 
thought Trey was great on his own. So it didn't, if he had been not quite as interesting, it might have sparked my attention because it would, and, and it certainly made me feel reassured that yeah. you could do the job. But I would have, if I, if Lucas hadn't taken it, I would have hired him anyway. Um, but Oklahoma, you come from a very, very small town there, and Little you, town, yeah. you know, you're kind of that classic story of, you know, young, small town boy going to the big city to yeah. hit it big. Yeah, yeah. Marlowe, Marlowe, Oklahoma. It's a little bitty town. But... Where his mom is right now, hi mom. No, no, she's in Oklahoma City. Oh, she is? Yeah. How come you're scared? You told me you didn't like to drive to Oklahoma City. That was when I was... 18, oh. 17, when I was going to college, I was I was so from such a small little town that I was worried about finding my way to the, the school in Oklahoma City for that drive up there. It's just it's been a long journey. And you know, and then you you auditioned for the UCLA graduate program. Yeah, yeah, UCLA holds auditions in New York, Chicago, San Francisco, LA, and I hit them up in Chicago and. Um, Got in. They took nine of us, and some of them are still some of my best friends. You know, some of my classmates. Coco Kleppinger is a casting director out here now. She's doing awesome. She's cast it. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's big. Yeah. I mean, it's good. You know, it's an amazing experience to have because you're in a very big prestigious school, so you're coming in contact with some. Like your teachers yeah. were probably pretty well-known people. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, after like... going to school in Oklahoma, I wanted to go to get you know, go to class with people who had won Oscars and Tonys and Emmys. And I just wanted classical training, so, because I love the theater. That's where I grew up learning, you know, to act in any way, so, like, yeah. Who gave you that opportunity? Yeah. I think it's yeah. amazing. It's a good way to move to L.A. One of the things I do find, though, with people coming out of a theater program is sort of a lack of understanding or awareness of camera yeah you know or a comfortability on the set because so much focus is on the craft which is great because you need it and yeah. it's on uh, it's on a, it's on how to work in a theater setting because that's sort of the ideal but um, you just get it's so trained in school and stuff like that at that moment it takes time to get out of it to get over the, the vocally being able to do theater and Working with your dialect and getting rid of your original dialect to do classics and things like that, you, it, it slowly comes back. Uh, it took me a long time to get used to the cameras, you know, to get used to doing film, and it's it's still always a challenge, you know. So. Except then you went, you've done nudity and sex, which is even scarier. I mean, that's interesting because to I mean, go that far to the extreme. Because I, I thought I have to say I knew, I knew you were nervous on Crazy Bitches, like you felt. Me, yeah, like yeah. Were... That was early on, and I was yeah. still, I was, I was, yeah, I was nervous. I don't know why. Maybe I don't know all those girls. All those hot. Uh, it's just a bunch of hot girls on the set, basically. But um. And they were all staring at you in that one scene. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I was like, caught right there. But yeah, it was, uh, it was early on, and I was. I'm definitely much more comfortable as the years go by. Yeah. Um, it's been a, it's been a, you know, a slow learning curve, big curve. I think for everybody, I mean, any craft that you take up, any any kind of artistic endeavor, you know, I have friends that start writing and they're like, I'm going to write a script, and you're like, okay, but you first script out, and I felt that way too when I, film theater goals beyond acting, do you have film theater goals beyond acting? Um, well, I mean, I'm, like, like, you like, direct, Jane, like you James write. just said, well, I'm always, I don't know. Every movie I watch, I'm upset with the direction of it. But like Jane's always, always except mine. Except Jane's. <laughs> no, except ones that I'm in. No, um, she uh, she's talking about writing things like that. How they take time. It's a, writing is a lonely, lonely sort of craft to me. It, I feel like it's the hardest out of uh, all of them to do. But that's what I'm most uh, focusing on, other than acting. I like being on stage or film right now is creating vehicles for yourself. Basically, is yeah. what you have to do, which is what, you know, everyone's doing yeah. out here, yeah. Every, everybody who's been in the tub pretty much has talked about, in their one way work. or the other, having to figure out how to get their own work, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it takes yeah. time to even figure out that you got to do it, and you think yeah. that you don't have to, and then eventually... Right. Well, you, you keep hoping you're going to be, you know, Lana Turner, Lana Turner, whatever, sitting on the 
stool at the soda shop where someone just walks in and yeah, discovers yeah. you yeah. and it's yeah. not yeah. I'm still waiting no. but my ass is getting big while I sit there yeah, just yeah. spreading on that chair but uh, <laughs> but but yeah but it's hard to figure that out and then once you do then you have to grapple with okay how do I go about yeah. doing these other things mm -hmm. you know even Jen Corday was in the tub last week and she was talking about the fact that she, yeah, yeah. But she started as an actor. She graduated with a, an, a, you know, a theater degree. Mm -hmm. She loved acting. And then, you know, five years into it, was like, I got to figure another way to go. Cause I and you said she it. went with music. She went with music, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> I know, and I said the same thing. I'm like, oh, that's, was that better? Like, yeah, how'd that go? <laughs> like, it's just, it's, uh, it, they're both hard. They're both hard, but with music, she can create She's her own right work that she can she express can herself constantly and directly with music right. like that. As an actor, you're always going through someone else's platform most of the time, you know, until yeah. you make your own. But as a musician, that's, I've always been jealous of musicians yeah. and vocalists. For and, that and these days, for the, you know, for very little money, you can record your own. Yeah. I mean, Sounds she great. records a lot of stuff in her, in her studio, but if she, if she's going to somebody, it's 300 bucks for the day. And yeah. you know what I mean? As opposed to writing, writing. Dwayne. Hey, Dwayne. Hey, Dwayne. What up? You know Dwayne? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a more, you can do it on a more regular basis. You can put it out to the world in an easier way. Yeah. And it doesn't cost much money. Yeah. Whereas doing film or theater costs a uh, boatload. Yeah. You know? Yeah, very expensive. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how cheaply you try to do it. Yeah, yeah. No, it turns yeah. out to be expensive. It turns out to be expensive. Oh, yeah. We were going to tell uh, I was going to say, what were we going to tell him about that I did that PG sex scene for Lifetime? I was oh, going to yeah. tell him that I did that. And then it was the first scene that I had to get on top of a girl and undulate without touching bodies and no thrusting without touching bodies well i mean you had to touch sort of no i mean i was or just did you a, hover? Just, i was hovering i was hovering cowie kaylee oh it's kaylee, kaylee. not cowie hi kaylee hi. it's my cousin Aww. um but yeah uh wait what were we talking about well how you you know the fact you couldn't touch bodies like what well, your oh, arms yeah, wasn't yeah. It killing you like Holding yourself. Nah, nah. No. I just lay. I just kind of rested on her between takes, whether she liked it or not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's a lie. Uh, That's a lie. Kind of. Jane. No. Jane. No. But um. No, kind of. But no, I and mean, you couldn't. You know, we, I could smoke, but I couldn't inhale. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Oh, he was a smoker too. Yeah. yeah. You know, David Shamero. Want, he told me the soap rules, which were very similar. Yeah, because you know? he was on that soap forever. He huh? was on a soap forever. And when we were doing all the sex scenes and crazy pictures, I was like, why are you so nervous? He's like, this is actually like my first real sex scenes because... Oh, that's interesting. You know, on the soap, you can't, you can't, you have to have one, like if, if she's... It's soft core. Underneath you, you yeah. ha she can't have both legs wrapped around. She has to have only one right, leg right. wrapped you think there's all these rules to make sure people don't feel like it's real. No thrusting. I don't know. But yeah, I thought that was cute. So Lifetime, yeah. of course, would be the same. Yeah, yeah. That's David Martin Forrest's movie. It's my good friend, David Martin What's it Forrest. called? It's called Unwritten Obsession. Did it come out already? Yeah, I, I think they're showing it again on Lifetime. But uh, Unwritten Obsession. Yeah. Check that out. His... You'll see, you'll see a PG-13 yeah. non-thrusting, yeah, yeah. uh, no I have sex contact. With one girl uh, while another little girl looks in the window. Oh, not a little girl. Oh, thank you. She's of legal age. <laughs> <laughs> like, ew! What is this movie? No, no. This is gross. <laughs> this cannot be lifetime. No, 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 it's on lifetime. It's on lifetime. So. So yeah. it's actually a legal aged girl, yeah. I imagine. It's fine. It's all Jane, good. Jane. 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 <laughs> oh my God. Well, you know, it's gonna. It, I think it's gonna be fun to try to figure out how to get you in a sex scene on Crazy Bitches. Oh, thank you, thank you, uh, Addie. Oh, Addie. Addie, Addie. That's my my niece. Hi, Addie. Hi. Hi, Cole. Hi, Kara. It's my little niece. Oh, and Jenny. Mom got the family. Jenny, I love you, Jenny. <laughs> They're coming in for me. Hey, kids. That's good. Who wouldn't? I love Jenny. She's my Oklahoman. Cole's my brother. Yeah. Well, hi, hi family. family. Yeah. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway, we'll have Stop to get it. we'll have to get you into some sort of. I got your shirt off of Crazy Bitches in the web series. Anyway. Yeah. 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 We'll get we'll get there. And the yoga pose. So Trey says to me, I don't. Do, how do you know I do yoga? And I'm like, well, don't you? And he's like, yeah. Right. You do. You do. Yeah. He's yeah. like, how do you know? I'm like, I saw a post of you, 
with your leg completely vertical. <laughs> like he was standing, but his leg was like that, like my arm. It was unbelievable. It was in platform hills too. That was at Burning Man, so. So I'm not what, what, it's impressive. How, how did you get involved with yoga? I mean, that's you've been doing it how many years now? Uh, about 10 since I came to California because I never paid any attention in Oklahoma to it and um, yeah I started doing that and it, that's basically I don't know for lack of sounding cliche yoga has changed my life over the past decade Just, really yeah wow. um, it's my meditation and it and I, I can focus on that and then it keeps my body healthy at the same time you know and and I'm a pretty impulsive and I don't know. I'm a pretty impulsive person, so it helps me to uh -huh. center down a little bit. Uh huh. How are you? Are you I, you're impulsive. Like, what would I'm, be an impulsive thing you've done in the last three months? I mean, I I don't know. I just, I was at the new beach up in Santa Barbara the other day. Just I, I just get out and go do you fun. Just go do something. I mean, That's I, good. Yeah, I mean, I I'm not. Yeah, I'm just saying. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't, even, I don't even know what the point is. That's why he does yoga. That's why to I help him center his thoughts. Let me focus. Yeah. Um, no, I, I just love it. I love it, and I think that I don't know. I've, I've known a lot of people who've taken it up and it's changed their lives too. Hopefully, yeah. better. I did it for about three years, and I hurt my arm, and then I stopped for a while, and I never got back. But I did love it. Yeah, you hurt your arm yeah. and you're kind of out. Yeah. On that. But um, but you, what have you been doing this summer? Anything fun? Uh, well, I was in Oklahoma with my family, and then I've camped all up and down the coast of California. I've been trying to see some things that I haven't seen since I moved out here. And um, I, I don't know, just filming. I, right now I'm working on a, a, a play, and oh, a, really? also a short film that we're doing that I wrote. Wow, um, that I have, I have a team around at this point and uh, someone's helping me write. And, oh, that's great. But this is something that I wrote four or five years ago. But it, you're doing it, right? It just takes that long, you know. It's What's okay. it about? A young, uh, it's about a young father who is uh, has a drug problem and or had a drug problem, a mother and father, and then um, they had a little girl, a daughter, and he splits and takes the little girl because the wife won't clean up. And um, it's sort of... Uh, an ensuing day after that where they come back together and hash things that things you know yeah. conflict happens and, and I assume by cleaning up you don't mean like the housework no <laughs> no she wouldn't she, she wouldn't clean up she wouldn't clean up the, the damn done, kitchen was dirty done with her. <laughs> yeah she left the kitchen all dirty it's been like Oklahoma <laughs> well we're wrapping up towards our 30 minutes but yeah. I do usually like to tell people what we're drinking just because it's sometimes fun to see mm. what people like to drink. And Trey, what is this? It's basically like he made a it spicy up. Paloma. It's a night. I didn't make it up as a drink, I just made it shitty. I didn't make it very well. It's a uh, mezcal, jalapenos, agave liqueur, a little bit of Angostura bitters, a little bit of club soda, and you shake it all up and throw it on ice. Muddle some jalapenos. But, um, yeah, we just kind of made it ghetto, so. Yeah, it. yeah, it's getting better uh, it as it goes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a big, well, Miss Cal's tequila, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't drink a lot of that, but, um, but it, it's where it's really working on me now. <laughs> it's, it's, it gets better and better. So, which is probably a good reason to wrap things up. I just want to remind everybody that um, we are in a countdown. We need to get to $10,000 by next Wednesday on the Indiegogo. And if you go to Indiegogo, just uh, search for Crazy Bitches web series and you'll find us, Crazy Bitches web series. Um, we have gotten a little bit of, hey Sheila, you're late. Um, we have gotten a little uh, bump from an, a private investor and uh, a couple of us have decided to put our own money into it as well. So we've gotten to a place where that $10,000, when we hit $10,000 on Indiegogo, we have enough for two episodes. When we get to $15,000, we have enough for three episodes. It's $5,000 an episode above that. So my goal really is to get three episodes at least in the can on this first round. Yeah. We're but do we're doing it. 
and we're going and we just hope that you guys are with us uh, and are going to take us to the end and not leave me with very large credit card bills because <laughs> that's help. where I'm at. Um, yeah. And uh, let's see, next week is Kathy DeBorno. Kathy. So next Tuesday at 6, Kathy's going to be on with me. Such a hardy. And um, I can do it, Gail. We can all do it. Uh, and yeah, so that's it. Trace, you've been great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, do you have a website or anything? I mean, Trey needs <clears> a website, but you're on Facebook, Facebook right? Facebook page, yeah, Facebook, yeah. Instagram, you can look there. Find, yeah. find him and follow him and friend him and all that good stuff because he's doing a lot of really good work. And uh, Watch people you may know on Netflix. Watch people you may know on yeah. Netflix. And we're going to see you guys next week. Um, if you have questions for Kathy, write them in. I will post an event page and you can write them in there and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll answer them while we're in the tub. Otherwise, have a great week, everybody. Oh, one more thing. I'm going to be doing a talk on Friday, one of my chats, at 6 o'clock on Friday night. Um, thank you, Sheila. I know we can. Um, Friday night at 6, and I want to talk about uh, the perils of independent filmmaking, the things that can go wrong, and the things that go right. <laughs> So if you want to join me, I'll do an event page for that too. And otherwise, uh, see you next Tuesday. Thanks, everybody.